Hey my friends, today I'm going to show you how to create a wet paint text effect in Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. That is super important. Thank you for that and let's get started. So let's delete all of these layers and start fresh. One thing that I already have done is of course select a picture and import it to the background. You can use any kind of picture of paint but also of any other kind of picture where you like the colors. I'm going to duplicate uh, my photo layer with the paint just to have one clean version. So let's right click on the layer and duplicate it and then uh, click on the little uh, check mark here to hide one of them and the next thing we're going to do is to create the text and of course it makes a lot more sense to use a font that looks like paint. Okay, so use your text tool over here on the left side, click and drag so you have the right size and then write your text. In my case, I'm writing wet paint. Of course, you can write whatever you want and I go to the move tool and then like the move tool is up here and then I'm selecting my font. The one I'm using is called dark line. Um, okay, so make it a good size. I will center it on my canvas and the next thing we want to do is to drag our picture layer onto the text layer to make it a child of it like that boom and the way or the the thing that's happening now is that the text or the font is basically working like a mask uh, which is important for us because it keeps the original size of the picture in the background and I want to use my smudge tool but also my liquify tool to move pixels around so I have to drag pixels from the outside that are not visible right now into the font. This is why I need the, the full resolution in the background. Okay, not to get ahead of us. Let's duplicate the layer again. Like I said, I want to do two things here to make it more paint like. So right click on your paint layer and um, duplicate that. And I will make the upper one invisible because the upper one is the one I want to use the liquify tool on. But first we are going to use the smudge tool. The smudge tool is over here, this little finger looks like a hand with a finger because you smudge when you draw something, for example, with uh, chalk or something, you would smudge it with the fingers. It's like a classic reference to drawing techniques. If you can't see the smudge finger or smudge tool, by the way, uh, click and hold here. And there are four different tools. You might see either of them. Uh, for example, this little drop here for the blur tool and then click and hold and select the smudge tool. Okay, so now with that done, here is the thing. I would suggest to you that you experiment at this point because this is of course artistic. You want to figure out what kind of look you want to have for your picture. Experiment with the width of your smudge tool, with the flow and with the strength of it because this of course influences the final look of the paint, wet paint look that you're creating. Okay, so um, Let's use the tool and try to follow the stroke of the paint where you think, okay, this is how the brush probably was um, moving over the surface of the canvas. And I'm doing multiple clicks here. So I'm not going in one stroke, I'm doing multiple clicks. So it, it, it's uh, again and again has the uh, opportunity to pick up some of the color in the background and just move it upwards or along the font, which isn't always upwards, of course. Okay, let's go over here. And you can take as much time as you want with it. Experiment a lot. Try to figure out what works for you, the kind of look you want to have. There we go. Let's move this also a little bit upward. And we are almost done here. Good move along this line here and this is at the moment 2D but we are going to apply some more effects later so don't turn off the video right now uh, because I'm going to use some more tricks and my special sauce as you know uh, to make this look a lot more realistic. Okay so now we have done that I'm going to make the second one visible again so we have the 
original um, look again basically and I'm going to switch over to my liquify persona by the way one thing I want to point out right now that's really important when you use the smudge tool or the liquify persona always make sure that you are on the pixel layers not on the text layer because if you do it on the text layer it will rasterize that layer and um, that's not going to look good Oh, by the way, I forgot one thing. Um, I want to create an adjustment layer for levels. You might not have to do that. You can see here my color is a little bit pale. So I'm using uh, the levels adjustment layer to move in the black levels and make it a, bit, a little bit darker and more high contrast. Okay, like that. So now you probably also can see it a little bit better on the screen. Okay, so next thing, like I said, Again, remember, select the layer that you want to edit, in this case, the upper pixel layer, um, and go with the liquify persona in here. And you want to use a smaller brush that's almost or a little bit bigger than the size of your, um, of your font, of the thickness of the stroke of your font. And um, you can play around here with the hardness, the opacity, the speed. I set the speed to 100% in my case. And I'm using this uh, Liquify Push Forward tool. So it pushes the pixels into the direction where my brush is going. And so I'm again brushing along, as you can see here, I'm moving um, these pixels, basically, the paint along um, the, yeah, I can say the, the font, the direction of the font to create kind of a motion in here. You don't have to do that. I think it looks good and it makes it look a little bit more like a color, liquid colors actually flowing along these strokes. Uh, let's go like that. That's good. Okay, let's move this in here and over there. Good. And the other one going to move upwards like this. Okay, cool. So let's move this along that font here, the line of the font. Good. And this is probably down here. I I didn't remember the exact motion I used in the after uh, the, the the layer before. So maybe it's a good idea to remember that, but I think it works either way. So don't worry too much. Experiment a lot. That's more important to more experiment with um, the outcome, the kind of look you want to have. There we go. Okay, good. Move this up a bit. Move that down here. And this probably up here. Good. We're almost done. Uh, whoop. Let's move this in here. Bring a little bit more color from the outside. This is why it's kind of important to have the background so you can drag in colors from the outside or... Okay, good. So now we can click apply. So the effect is applied. And now to combine these two layers, you can see this is done with the smudge tool and this is done with the liquify tool. To combine them, I'm going to use overlay as a blend mode. So you can see that I can see both of these structures in my um, design basically. Okay, and of course you can reduce if you want to um, the opacity to make it a bit more or less visible. Let's reduce this maybe to 70% in that case. That looks good. Okay, cool. So the next thing I want to do is that I will, um, let's turn off the level adjustment and I will go up here to... Um, edit and copy flattened because I want to have a copy of all of that and then paste it in again. So you can see here now we have an extra pixel layer that has as its content everything we have created so far on one layer. Let's move this back to the original position. I can hide the original layer. And the reason why I do this is because I want to use some layer effects to make it look more believable. Okay, so I can now activate again my levels adjustment. So I get my contrast and the darker color back. And now with this copy of everything, I'm going to go here into the effects. And first of all, I'm going to use a 3D effect. Um, so uh, make that check here next to 3D and click on the little cogwheel next to it so you get this um, window. 
And in here we have a lot of different settings you can play around with. Let's make the radius pretty round because it's soft, um, wet paint. So let's go like that. Uh, soften, I don't need to soften. And of course here you can also define a little bit um, the material, how shiny it is and all these kind of things, which might make it a little bit more or less uh, look like latex. So, or latex color, basically dried latex color. So that's important to point out. And now we can play around with the um, position of the light. I will use multiple lights to create a different kind of atmosphere. Um, let's also set the ambient light to 0% up here, sorry. Um, and uh, to make the light less bright, you can click on color and make the color simply darker like that. And so the color, the light you're using is not as bright. And you can see here, you can select the direction from which the light is coming to make it look, well, any way you want, basically. So I will again use a darker gray to have yet another position where the light could come from. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, that good, looks good. And then I'm going to add, um, this is again kind of a little bit the special sauce thing. Uh, I like always to add a little bit of source um, of color that has some, uh, a little uh, a light source that has some color in it. In this case, I want to use like a, a, a warm afternoon light, like an orange, dark orange light. Uh, let's make it maybe a little bit darker. Let's see. So I just have a touch of this orange light on my font. Okay, good, good. So that now we have done this, uh, you can also, or if you want to, again, experiment a lot with that, uh, use bevel and emboss and set this to inner. And you can play around with the direction, of course, also with the other settings. In this case, we only need the light direction to change a little bit. Um, I just want to have like a certain additional highlight. Let's see on the outside like that. You can see here now on this side is also a little bit of a highlight going along um, the font. Let's see. Okay. The highlight, we can go in here, maybe reduce the opacity a little bit of that highlight. Okay, like that. Good. Now we can close that. And um, if we want to, we could also apply some um, outer shadow, just a little bit, just a touch. Whoops, that's way too much. Already offset in here, make it a lot sharper, make it bring it really close uh, to the to the paint because it's sitting, of course, directly on the paper. Um, reducing the effect a little bit, make the radius a little bit higher. Okay, like that. Good. Um, we can, of course, also let's make a fill layer here in the background. So you can see the result a little bit better, better than with the checkboard uh, effect that we have before. Also check your colors and, um, a colors, by the way, this is important to point out colors very much, um, depend on how bright or dark the background is. So, um, yeah, design them with the background in mind. Okay, so this was basically how you create that wet paint effect uh, for your pictures or your font, basically. And yeah, you can play around with that, adjust it in any kind of way you like and see what kind of results you get from that. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.